Good morning. morning. It is good to be worshiping with you all, Patty. (laughs) And uh, we will begin our worship with the ringing of the church bell. Tessa's getting creative with her comments. She has uh, the word good and then this beautiful sunrise picture. So good morning to you too, Tessa. I want to begin our worship sharing some announcements. Uh, Today is Special Offering Sunday, so here at Lost Creek, we're collecting uh, loose change for our Joyful Noise offering, and McCoysville's collecting the Meals on Wheels offering. At McCoysville, after worship, we will have our session meeting. And then on Wednesday at 9.30 a.m., anyone who would like to come and discuss uh, the book of Revelation, we will be getting together uh, at McCoysville for a final uh, conversation about Revelation and answering questions. Thursday, we begin a eight-week study on prayer, and that will be at 7 p.m., and you can join us in person or by Zoom, so let me know if you want to attend. Uh... Lost Creek, Trinity, and McCoysville are going to join together next Sunday. We won't be worshiping here in the sanctuary. We'll be over in the park, and we are going to have a uh, service to ask God's blessing on our first responders. Uh, It will be a communion service, so if you are worshiping with us at home and want to partake of communion, have uh, bread and a drink available for each person. Um, Bring a, if you're coming in person, bring a lawn chair along. And uh, there will be some light refreshments afterwards to uh, fellowship with the, with the first responders. The loose offering will go to the fire company for their ex- uh, expenses. And uh, if you are worshiping at home, be aware that uh, the live stream for the service will not be on Lost Creek's page or McCoysville's page. It will be on Trinity Lutheran Church's page. So you might want to go there and uh, look that page up and like it and uh, be ready and looking for that to start right before 9 a.m. And those listening on the telephone, uh, once the live stream starts, we should be able to uh, have the... uh, Phone service started at the same time. The Lost Creek Trustees will meet uh, Tuesday the 28th at 7. On October 3rd, Lost Creek will collect a love offering for the Meals on Hope meal packing event. And on October 3rd, Lost Creek and McCoysville both will celebrate uh, communion. Don't forget the crop walk is coming up October 10th. Food pantry distribution in McCoysville is October 16th. Also on the 16th, the Lion's Den is hosting a 5K to support the Szerski family. And coming up on Monday, October 25th, Lost Creek is going to host a free drive through senior luncheon. Um, we'll prepare a lunch in the kitchen, a spaghetti lunch in the kitchen, put it in to-go boxes, and then the seniors can drive through the parking lot and we'll throw them through, through the, the boxes through the window like Frisbees. No, we'll, we'll hand them the meals. Uh, but that'll be coming up on the 25th. We will send around um, soon a sign-up sheet for uh, foods that we'll need and also volunteers we need. And then don't forget the food packing event is coming up October 30. We need 100 volunteers from all the different churches. So if you can help out, uh, please let us know. Are there any other announcements we need to make at this time? Okay. Let's uh, prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we listen to our meditation music.
true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. To all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives the power to become children of God. This morning we are starting a sermon series on prayer, and we'll start with some comments Jesus made about prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. If I can find chapter 6. Yeah. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not, be, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. The Lord always blesses the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Teach us to seek you and to rely on you in all our needs, so that our deepest desires may be satisfied, and we may finally see you face to face. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let's wish everyone peace be with you. Peace be with you and also with you. <laughs> and uh, worshiping with us at home, uh, peace be with you to uh, Sue and uh, Barbar and Noreen and Linda and Heidi. And uh, Joe and Danielle. Hmm. Uh, Don and Tessa. <laughs> and apparently uh, Google Assistant or Siri, one of the two. <laughs> um, Anne and Barry and Nan and Lindsay and Sandy. Okay. So uh, peace be with all of you and uh, anyone else who is uh, watching or listening, and I didn't see their names. Uh, God be with you. Uh, let us stand and sing together hymn number 13, God Himself is with us.
Let us join together in confessing our sins to God using the prayer of confession in the bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Through the Holy Spirit, God gives life, freedom from the power of sin, and resurrection from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Live in newness of life. Amen. Having been assured of God's grace and mercy in our lives, let us respond with an affirmation of faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let's stand as we sing the Gloria Patri. As we come to a time of prayer, uh, if you are worshiping with us at home uh, and you have a specific prayer request that you would like to share or a joy you'd like to share, uh, you can use Facebook Messenger to pass that on and we will include that in our closing prayer at the end of the service. Um, or you can share some general prayers right now in your chats. Uh, but right this week, uh, all the churches in our presbytery are pray, um, praying for Highland United Presbyterian Church and re the Reverend Nancy McClure. Uh, as we pray for the congregation, pastor, and session, let us ask for perseverance, wisdom, and compassion in these challenging days. So please keep Westminster in your uh, prayers. Uh, oh, Highland United, excuse me. Last week was Westminster. Keep um, Highland United in your prayers this week. Um, as I mentioned last week, Dan gave me this calendar with uh, jokes on it, and for September 13th, I just had to share this one. Remember the children's ministry bake sale. Our kids make great snacks. <laughs> so we'll see what, uh, what the next week uh, shares with us. Um, so let's uh, look at our VIPs. And we've got uh, lots of them this week. Uh, Anne and Michaela are both celebrating birthdays today. So happy birthday to you, Anne and Michaela. Uh, Matt is on Monday. Tim is on Tuesday. Uh, Ellie is on Wednesday. So Ellie, have a happy birthday. 
Uh, Kim is on Thursday. Uh, also, Kristen is on Thursday. So those are lots of birthdays to celebrate. Uh, any other birthdays or anniversaries that we're aware of? Hey, not seeing anything. Okay, so we are going to sing and sign happy birthday to Anne and Michaela and all of our birthday people. So happy birthday on that. Um, are there any general joys that we want to share this morning? Okay. So uh, 28 more people got out of uh, Afghanistan. Uh, the Wings of Kindness 5K was yesterday, and I believe Abby got first in her age group, and uh, Isla got a medal for being the youngest runner in the uh, kids' run, and uh, I managed to make it third in uh, my age group, which I thought actually was pretty good considering everybody else was younger than me. I was the oldest one in my category, so uh, I, I felt pretty good about that. So. No, I didn't get a medal for being the oldest. I, I wasn't the oldest runner. I was just the oldest in my category. Uh, I did get a medal for getting third, though. So One of these days, I'm going to show up in church with all my medals on. You know, just, just, most of them are just participation medals, you know, but uh, it'll, look, it'll look impressive. Uh, uh, other joys? Okay, so Lorraine is uh, having improvement in her eyesight, so very good. Okay, Dorothy for uh, healing. Ah, okay, Joe and Danielle Kal Kalinowski uh, down at McCoysville celebrated a 37 year anniversary, so congratulations. Other joys or concerns? Right, Cliff and Dana uh, coming home. And I don't want to steal anyone's thunder, but I understand Cliff uh, got his elk. Anything else? Well, I heard stats are saying this too. Okay. Right. So continued prayers for the fire, well, for the people fighting the fires out in, uh, on the West Coast. Uh, the Northwest is getting rain, which should help, but it sounds like California is missing most of that, and they're wrapping the sequoias with fire blankets to try and protect them from uh, those that remain from being burned. Let's uh, bring our joys and concerns to the Lord in prayer. Each of our petitions ends, Hear us, O God. I invite you to respond, Your mercy is great. Um, and we'll also pray for uh, Tim Smith. Let us pray. God of creation, God of wonder, hear this offering of prayer and praise as a gift from our thankful hearts. We thank you for the wonders all around us, for grains of sand, the smell of rain falling on dry ground, for the shifting of the seasons and the sound of laughter. We thank you, God, for one another, for the joys and struggles of relationships that nurture us and help us to grow. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, we thank you for your eternal presence in our midst and for the good news of your deep abiding love for all of creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Even as we give thanks, we lift up the concerns that burden us this day. We ask your peace and blessing on all those we have named today and all whose names and circumstances remain in the safe sanctuary of your spirit's care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, and for all who provide care for the needs of others. We pray for the lonely and the despairing, for those who struggle with addiction, for those who feel trapped in situations of abuse, for those who are making difficult decisions in life. And hear the prayers we lift to you in the silence of this time. God, we pray for your church and its mission to the world. Bless all your children and pour your spirit upon us, bringing healing, comfort, and strength wherever it is needed. All this we ask in the name of the one who calls us forward in faith, Jesus Christ our Lord, who also taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let's uh, stand together and sing hymn number 391, Prayer is the Soul's Sincere Desire. So as I mentioned this morning, we begin a uh, series on prayer. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken uh, from Matthew chapter 6. Uh, it's part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount is meant to remind us of Moses bringing the commandments down from Mount Sinai. Remember the story, you know, the Israelites have come to Mount Sinai wandering in the wilderness. 
Moses goes up on the mountain. He encounters God. He hears God's commands, the Ten Commandments and many others. And they're commandments on how to live together as the people of God. And then Moses brings those commandments down to the people. Well, Jesus, as he begins his ministry in the Gospel of Matthew, takes the crowds and his disciples up with him onto a mountain. And there he sits and he shares with them more about how God calls us to live together as the people of God. And here in chapter 6, he moves into teaching about prayer. And I... I think one of the things that a lot of Christians uh, really long for is somebody to teach them how to pray. Uh, in Luke's gospel, where Jesus introduces the, uh, the Lord's Prayer, the disciples actually come to Jesus and say, teach us how to pray the way John taught his disciples. And I think many Christians have that desire to learn how to pray. But what does it mean? To pray. What is prayer really all about? And here in the, uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is teaching us what prayer is all about, teaching us how to pray. He begins by teaching us how not to pray and what prayer is not. So the first thing he says is don't be like the hypocrites. They stand up in, the, in church and they go out on the street corners and they pray out loud, hoping that everybody will see them and hear them and think what holy spiritual people they are. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, most people's problem is not standing up in church or going out on the street corner to pray out loud so that other people will notice them. Most of us, me included, and after, this is even after 30 years of ministry, most of us are afraid of standing up and praying out loud in front of everybody. I think what's going on in our heads is that we have this idea that everybody out there in the world knows what prayer is supposed to sound like and what words you're supposed to use and how you're supposed to say things. And, if, and except for us, we're the only ones who don't know that. And so we, if we get up and we try to pray in front of everybody, everybody else is going to notice what a bad job we're doing, and they're going to judge us for it. Pro the thing is, you know, everybody's feeling that way. But Jesus, uh, in, in saying don't be like the hypocrites, is basically saying the same thing to us if we're afraid of standing up and praying in, in public. And that is prayer is not about impressing other people with how spiritual or holy or godly you are. Prayer is about talking to God. And so Jesus' advice is, instead of standing up and praying in public, go to, go to a, a private place where it's just you and God, where you can get out of your head, where you can stop worrying about whether other people are judging how you pray, and just talk to God. Now, that doesn't mean public prayer is wrong. We do it every Sunday. <laughs> and we do it in groups. But when we are praying in public, the whole purpose is to be kind of a, its own little secret room with that group in it. And we bring the joys and the concerns of the group up to God. And that's what public prayer is all about, just listening to what are the joys and concerns of our group and then one person lifting them all up to God on behalf of everyone else. But prayer is not about showing other people how good or holy you are or even how unholy you are or how ungodly you are. Prayer is not about other people's opinions of you. Prayer is about talking to God. Now, on the flip side of that, uh, Jesus says, don't be like the Gentiles who babble on and on and on and on, hoping to convince their gods to listen to them and to answer their prayers. 
And I think when most of us talk about teach me to pray, unfortunately, that's kind of what we're leaning toward. Are there certain words that we're supposed to say? Are there certain phrases? Is there a certain posture? Is there a certain time of day or night? Are there, is there a way that I can learn to pray to God so that I can be certain God is listening to me and that God will grant me my requests? How do I convince God to give me what I need? And Jesus says, don't be like that. Because God is your heavenly father, and God already knows what your needs are. And that's a strange statement. If God already knows what our needs are, then why pray? What is the purpose of prayer? If it's not to show everybody else how righteous you are, if it's not to manipulate God into giving you what you want, what is prayer all about? Jesus has already given us some hints in the call to go to God in secret and pray to God in secret. And in telling us that God is like our Heavenly Father and knows what we need and wants to give us what we need. It's about relationship. God is our Heavenly Father. We are God's children. We are to develop a relationship with God. And to do that, we pray. Uh, and this is something that I, th that I think we instinctively know in our book uh, by Pete Gregg, uh, How to Pray. Uh, at, in one of the early chapters, he talks or gives examples of people praying. And, you know, most of these examples are people in a, in a crisis moment, not all of them. Uh, he talks about uh, Anna Quindlin, who uh, sh uh, shares in her novel One True Thing about being 19 years old and sitting beside her mom as her mom is receiving chemotherapy and praying that the chemotherapy will work. And she says, I prayed to myself without form, only incohate feelings, one word, please, 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 please. There was a longing for some, a relationship with something beyond herself that could help her in this time of need. Or uh, rock star uh, David Grohl, uh, they were at a concert and his uh, drummer Taylor Hawkins had overdosed on drugs and was in the hospital and so David was going back and forth to the hospital and the uh, hotel room and uh, he said uh, he would pray as he was walking home from the hospital out loud to God. He says, I'm not a religious person, but I was out of my mind. I was so frightened and heartbroken and confused. Uh, maybe you've heard or heard of the book or uh, seeing the movie Eat, Pray, Love, Elizabeth Gilbert uh, is talking in it, and she says, hello, God, how are you? I'm Liz, it's nice to meet you. I haven't ever spoken directly to you before. And then she starts to cry. Can you please help me? I am in desperate need of help. I don't know what to do. And as the tears subside, she said, I experienced a peace so rare I didn't want to exhale for fear of scaring it off. I don't know when I'd ever felt such stillness. And then Pete uh, shares about his friend, Kathy, who was a militant atheist. And one night in her lodging, she's gazing down at her sleeping baby. And she is so overwhelmed with the desire to give thanks to someone or something for this gift she whispers a few self-conscious words of gratitude out into the silence. And as she did so, the atmosphere seemed to change. Wave upon wave of love, unlike anything she had ever experienced, came flooding into the room. And she relinquished her ardent atheism at that moment and became a Christian. In all of these examples, People in times of stress, but also in times of joy, have this desire to connect with something greater than themselves. 
because that's the way God made us. God created us to be in relationship with him. And our hearts are not still until they are still in God. God is our Heavenly Father. We are God's children. And prayer is how we build that relationship. Think about uh, all the stories you've heard or seen about parents who are so absorbed in their work life or in their social life that they ignore their children. Now, they're good providers. They provide food and clothing and shelter. They provide them an education. They make sure they get to all of their school or extracurricular activities. They buy them wonderful presents at birthday and Christmas. But in all those stories, what's the one thing the children want and need that the parents aren't giving them? It's their time. Right? They long to have time and to develop a personal relationship with their parents. And even as adults, if we've grown up in a situation like that and we've resigned ourselves to the fact that we will never have that kind of relationship with our parents, deep down inside there's still that wish that we could. The way you develop that personal relationship between parents and children is spending time together. And at its heart, that is what prayer is all about. God is always present with us. It's not a question of God not spending enough time with us. It's about us spending time with our Heavenly Father. If the only time we pray is when we need something, and when we're thinking about God, that's a start. That's not a lot of time to build a relationship on. Prayer is about coming to God on a regular basis, spending time with God. And as we will see when Jesus uh, teaches the disciples and us the Lord's Prayer, everything is fair game. God wants to hear about it all, the good, the bad, the ugly. But prayer starts with us spending time with God, growing in our relationship with him. And when we do that, our faith becomes stronger. We are able to handle the situations we face in the world more, and we find ourselves ready to serve God more. Amen. So uh, let us stand and we'll sing together the uh, doxology and ask God's blessing on our offerings and on our joyful noise and Meals on Wheels offering. pray. Before you, O God, we offer our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. We lay our gifts before you in praise and thanksgiving for your many blessings. May these offerings continue the transforming work of your spirit in and through our congregation. Amen. Let's remain standing, and we'll join together in singing hymn 324, I Need Thee Every Hour. Thank you. 
You may be seated. And uh, Max Henry will play our postlude music for us, Near to the Heart of God. Max. And let's stand and we'll sing uh, our praise song, Awesome God. Uh, and we'll sing it through twice since we don't have music, so we'll have to get it right the first time and then we'll be ready to go for the second time. Okay, ready? Here we go. Uh, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Again, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. And uh, we'll close with the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.